Good morning, YouTube. I'm gonna show you how to do a culinary workhorse. I'm gonna show you how to make a bechamel from scratch. Super easy, but it's one of those things that once you master it, you can whip out a sauce in no time and build an amazing foundation for some of the best macaroni and cheese you'll ever eat in your life, right? Yeah. All right, let's cook y'all. We got a family to feed and the eggs are ready. <laughs> Let's talk about how to make something kind of fundamental. Every once in a while, I, I come up with these ideas and I'm thinking, oh, I ought to shoot a video on that. And then I think, no, that's too basic. And then I think, no, wait a minute. Some of my best videos have been pretty bit basic. It's like how to peel a peach and how to defrost a turkey fast and how to zest a lemon. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna show you how to make a bechamel. I'm gonna show you how to make a white sauce, okay? And it is super easy, however, once you understand how to make a basic white sauce like this, you've got the basis for all kinds of things. Tons of casseroles. So, all right, all I have here, two tablespoons of butter. Melting it over relatively low heat. And I'll pick the camera up and show you back and forth what I'm doing. Um, so anyway, all kinds of things have casseroles, including macaroni and cheese, right? Right. And the casserole I'm actually in the middle of shooting another video on chicken divan, which reminds me of my great aunt, who we called sister. So yes, I'm a southerner that had a great aunt sister. All right, so in here, all I did was add oh, three tablespoons of flour, and a, strictly speaking, the ratio for making a white sauce or a gravy or for thickening something is one, one, one. So a tablespoon of butter, a tablespoon of flour, and a tablespoon of liquid. And in, in the case of a bechamel, it's milk or cream, right? I know, but I used three. So I had two tablespoons of butter, three tablespoons of flour, and I've got two cups of milk. Why am I doing that? Well, I like it a little thicker. Two cups of milk. And we're gonna start small. I'll get my camera over here so you can see. So I start small. I'm adding a little bit, and I'm just gonna cook and whisk until that incorporates. If you dump it all in there at once, it'll get lumpy. Like that, is, that's pretty lumpy right now, right? That'll smooth out in a second. The trick is, go slow, and whisk a lot. Now, several things you can do to a bechamel, and um, I'm gonna tell you the basics classic for a bechamel or a white sauce. Whoop, a little bit of fresh nutmeg. I happen to love fresh nutmeg. So that is a big yes in my book. So you don't need a ton, about a, I don't know, half a teaspoon. And honestly, if, if you don't have fresh nutmeg, don't bother. Pre-ground nutmeg has lost all of its oomph. Now, this nutmeg, whole nutmeg, is dirt cheap. I think I paid, I don't know, five bucks for the whole jar. There's about 12 in there. And I, I literally have a video from a couple years ago where I was telling Boone that he would inherit that jar of nutmeg from me. That's how long they last. He thought it was serious. He thought that was in his inheritance, <laughs> which I love. Okay, so there's one. And then you also, <laughs> if you're making a bechamel like for uh, something with lots of cheese, which we are about to do, um, a couple classic things that you want to do. So ground mustard is one, a little garlic powder, a little onion powder, and of course, none of them. Oh, here they are. Everything found, found everything at once. So teaspoon of ground mustard. That's going to whisk in. And then we are adding half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And we're giving it a whisk. Oh, it's just moving slow. Now, a couple things. I want some black pepper in here and I want some onion powder. So, I call um, onion powder, garlic powder, salt and pepper. That's my SOS. Same old seasoning. 
onion powder, about a teaspoon. Same old seasoning, save our supper. Same old stuff. <laughs> you know how that goes. All right, then finally some black pepper. <coughs> I was breathing in the black pepper. And my washing machine is calling my name. Isn't it, Mark? There's always, a, there's always a machine here doing something. All right, so here is our bechamel at this point. Hasn't come up to a simmer yet. So let's give it just a minute. All right, so it has almost come up to heat. So we're gonna add the rest of our milk. And now look at this, look how smooth it is. That's perfect. So now it just comes back up to a boil. We're gonna keep an eye on it. We don't really want it to boil, boil. We just wanna let it simmer, but it won't come to its full thickening power until it comes up to a simmer. And simmers for at least a minute. So that's what we're doing now. All right, check this out. We've come up to a boil. This is, well, no, we've come up to a simmer. And it has simmered. And can you see how thick that is? Now that's exactly what we want. So let me show you. Nice, rich, silky, perfectly smooth. Okay. Now here is where you give it a little taste and you adjust your seasonings. Mm. It wants a bit of salt. Okay. So salt and a stir and it's ready to use. How completely amazing is that? You're done. Good morning, YouTube. Just in time for holiday cooking, I'm gonna show you how to make a workhorse in the kitchen. We're gonna make a rich, silky, luscious bechamel. So simple, but so foundational. You can take this stuff and turn it into just about any casserole in the world. And if you want rockstar macaroni and cheese, mm, this is how you start. All right, guys, let's cook. We got a family to feed. YouTube. Thanks for watching. And if you found any of that helpful, do me a favor, jump on over to Patreon and check out how you can do even more to support my channel. And as always, you can like and hit subscribe and share on social media. Um, I appreciate all of those things. <laughs>